Hello, this is Bruce Winker, President of High Power Optics. This is video number two on barrel and receiver inspection in my video series on advanced rifle scope installation. Video number one in this series gives an introduction to me and the rifle scope installation goals and methods discussed in this series. Proper barrel to receiver alignment is essential for the rifle scope to operate within the expected elevation and windage adjustment range. This quick inspection takes only about 10 minutes and doing it before installing the rings allows me to address issues before they cause problems later. The purpose of this inspection is to determine if the barrel is mounted crooked in the receiver. If this problem exists, I discuss what to do about it. Ideally, we want the axis of the rifle bore mounted coaxial to the axis of the receiver, that is, parallel to the receiver in both the horizontal and vertical directions. In production rifles, the barrel and receiver often are not coaxial. This issue is far more common in production rifles than people would expect. In custom rifles, the barrel usually is parallel to the receiver, but there is no guarantee, especially if the gunsmith wasn't the one who actually installed the barrel. When the barrel is crooked at all, it is usually misaligned in the horizontal direction, and sometimes in the vertical direction as well. Confirming that the horizontal alignment is good before starting the scope installation gives me confidence that the scope will operate as expected. In the event that the rifle has a Picatinny rail already installed, I also inspect how accurately the rail is mounted on the receiver. If the barrel is crooked in the horizontal direction, there could be problems later due to the erector tube optics being too far off axis when the rifle is zeroed that would cause the windage adjustment to be large when it's supposed to be centered. This drawing shows the mechanical limits of the reticle adjustment found in many scopes. Notice how the corners are rounded. Scope manufacturers deal with this in different ways. In some scopes, the manufacturer limits the windage correction to avoid the rounded corners. In other scopes, this issue is not addressed at all, and the elevation range depends on the windage adjustment near the corners. For these scopes, a large windage adjustment could lead to a loss of elevation range. Because of these issues, it's important to know how large a misalignment there is between the barrel and the receiver. Operating the internal optics far off axis can also lead to a loss of optical resolution or image contrast. If the barrel is crooked in the vertical direction, there could be a limitation in the scope elevation adjustment. Therefore, the max range of the rifle and scope could be less or more than planned for. The measurement of vertical misalignment is best done using a boresight collimator, which is discussed in video number 7. I could do it using just the tools I have here, but the process is too lengthy for this video. While the barrel misalignment in the horizontal direction can also be measured using a boresight collimator, the collimator method requires the scope to be installed, whereas the method in this video doesn't. So it's time efficient for me to do this quick inspection first and thereby avoid wasting effort installing the scope, only to remove it later to fix an alignment problem. So what amount of misalignment is acceptable? For most recreational shooting, I want the barrel axis to be aligned to the receiver or rail axis within about 16 minutes of arc, or 16 MOA. For high magnification scopes or long range shooting, I want the misalignment less than 8 MOA. In practice, these are soft requirements. Some scopes are more tolerant to operating off axis than others. I usually check the scope specs beforehand to determine the actual horizontal adjustment range. Nonetheless, when I encounter a barrel that is crooked by more than these criteria, I usually take steps to address the problem and reduce the misalignment either by remounting the rail or basis or using Burris signature rings. In this video, I assume the rifle bore is coaxial to the barrel axis, which is usually the case. The tools required to do these inspections include two steel rulers, 12 to 18 inches long. I confirm that the ruler edges are straight by placing the two rulers together and looking for gaps between them. And a fine ruler or digital caliper, which is what I prefer. This rifle is an FN SPR bolt action rifle chambered in 308 Winchester. It has a factory installed steel Picatinny rail. The muzzle has been threaded by a gunsmith, but the receiver hasn't been modified in any way. Because it is a high end precision rifle, one would expect the barrel and Picatinny rail to be coaxial. In this video, I'll show that this isn't the case, and I'll discuss what to do about it. To measure the misalignment angle, I first measure the alignment of the barrel to the receiver. Then I measure the alignment of the receiver to the Picatinny rail, if necessary. Then I combine these two measurements. This is how I measure the alignment of the barrel to the receiver. Place the ruler or straight edge against the right side of the receiver, with 6 inches of the ruler sticking out past the receiver toward the muzzle. Measure the gap between the end of the ruler and the side of the barrel. 
Repeat for the left side of the barrel and receiver. Then I calculate the offset, or the difference between the left and right measurements, and divide by two. Then I divide that result by the length of barrel that I measured to get the angle in radians. Then I convert radians to MOA. Here I show a simple equation to convert these measurements directly to the horizontal barrel misalignment angle. For this rifle, the barrel misalignment that I measured is about 7.2 MOA. This is how I measure the horizontal alignment of the receiver to the Picatinny rail. Checking rail alignment to the receiver is similar to the previous measurement, except that now two rulers are needed. One is placed against the receiver and the other against the rail, as shown. Looking down vertically, I measure the gap between the ends of the two rulers. Then I move the rulers to the opposite side of the receiver and rail and repeat the measurement. This method is only accurate for small rail misalignments, however. If the rail is offset to the left or right, or the misalignment angle is large, this method won't be accurate. But inspecting the scope mount this way will indicate that something is wrong that requires further investigation. I use the equation shown to calculate the rail misalignment angle from these two measurements. Then I combine the measurements for the barrel and rail misalignment by subtracting the second misalignment value from the first. For this rifle, the rail misalignment is about 4.5 MOA. But it's in the same direction as the barrel misalignment, so one cancels the other out to some extent. When I combine the two measurement values, the total misalignment is only about 2.7 MOA, which is well within my criteria. If the rail misalignment had been in the opposite direction, however, the total misalignment would have been about 11.6 MOA. Since this rifle is used for long-range shooting, the total misalignment would have exceeded my criteria. Depending on the scope I was using, I might have needed to address the problem. That's why it's important to inspect the barrel and rail misalignment alignment separately. I recommend using ring true tape when installing a scope. You can buy ring true tape from High Power Optics. I'll leave a link in the description below. This concludes this video in the series. For more information on rifle scopes and their use, see my tutorial by clicking on the link below. Please hit the like button and feel free to leave questions. I will respond shortly. For notice of my future video releases, hit the subscribe button below and the bell notification button.